Guantanamo has not been uh, in the headlines very much, obviously, uh, for the past couple of years. Uh, until uh, recently, these hunger strikes have uh, have been, you know, taking place there. Uh, we've actually been force feeding people. Uh, there's two. I believe there's actually uh, over 100, if uh, 100 at least. Hung, uh, taking part in the hunger strike at Guantanamo now. Oh, the number the, has gone up. The number has gone up. 100 people taking uh, hunger strikes in Guantanamo, uh, and then those op-eds from Guantanamo detainees uh, in in uh, uh, in the New York Times and the Guardian. President Obama was asked about this yesterday at a press co- press conference, and I want to play what he said, uh, if we have that sound ready, and then kind of go over the record there and what he could possibly do in the future. But go ahead with the sound. I continue to believe that we've got to close Guantanamo. Uh, I think, well, uh, you know, I, I think it is critical for us to understand that Guantanamo is not necessary to keep America safe. It is expensive. It is inefficient. It uh, hurts us in terms of our international standing. It lessens cooperation with our allies on counterterrorism efforts. It is a recruitment tool for extremists. It needs to be closed. Now, uh, Congress uh, determined that they would not let us close it. Uh, And despite the fact that there are a number of the folks uh, who are currently in Guantanamo who the courts have said uh, could be returned uh, to their country of origin or uh, potentially a third country. Um, I'm going to go back at this. Uh, I've asked my team to review everything that's currently being done in Guantanamo, everything that we can do administratively, and I'm going to re-engage with Congress uh, to try to make the case that this is not uh, something that's in the best interest of the American people. So that's, you know, as President Obama is one to do sometimes, that's very strong, clear, and articulate rhetoric. What has the administration's record been on Guantanamo? Uh, you know, a lot of this, he's sort of outsourcing the blame to Congress, but arguably uh, he has a little bit more discretion over what could be done in Guantanamo than he's uh, owning up to there. Yeah, I mean, as, as, as you were saying, this is something that hasn't been uh, on the front pages for a couple of years. I'd say it's actually, uh, as, as as campaign promises go and not following through on them, he's had a pretty good run on this one, that it's been over four years uh, uh, since he had committed to, to closing Guantanamo, and uh, he, he has made fairly little progress in, in, in moving that along. Now, if he wants to pin it on Congress, you know, that, that's a fair argument. Congress can do more. Congress is ultimately going to be required to make the big decisions about fundamentally closing down the facility. But there are 86 detainees who have been essentially cleared for release uh, pending uh, security agreements with the host countries receiving them. Now, the administration has the ability now to to basically uh, remove those security waivers or make security waivers for these people so they can be uh, released from Guantanamo. And, uh, you know, why that hasn't happened, I I, can only speculate on. Uh, But as they say, as things go, he's faced very little political blowback for uh, uh, making uh, terribly, terribly little progress uh, in reducing the number of detainees and ultimately in making the, 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 the end game, which is to, to shut down the facility at Guantanamo Bay. Right. And I, and I think also just recently, we, you know, he also shut down uh, the office uh, that had been charged with finding ways of shutting down Guantanamo. So it's just another right. one of these very, you know, tricky ways of interpreting uh, what President Obama is doing and what the kind of uh, coherence or instincts are in policy, because it seems like he genuinely, I think I don't question his sort of personal sincerity, uh, but then the kind of follow through and reactivity on a news cycle basis to something that this is as important as this, that he's made as little uh, progress on, uh, is sort of alarming. I mean, what what do you think? I mean, he said, you know, we're going to kind of re-review this, but what what are the scenarios uh, for shutting this down or at least getting the people out that have been cleared to go? I mean, I think that, that probably the fundamental problem here from a political perspective is that there is very little upside 
to finally closing Guantanamo. Because the truth is, is that some people are going to be released who uh, they probably do have some evidence on, and they got it under uh, questionable circumstances. Um, and in some cases, you're releasing people who have been radicalized at Guantanamo. So this is not right. uh, an ideal set of circumstances. But if you were going to prosecute some of these people, it's probably been botched from the very beginning in the ways that they've been treated, the way they've been kept out of the legal system, the ways in which they were interrogated. Um, and at this point, the reality is that the folks are pretty much going to be released um, who may or may not pose a danger going forward. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow. And but one where it's pretty clear what the inevitable uh, conclusion of it is going to be, which is that there's some acknowledgement that we simply are incapable of even using the military tribunals to charge uh, a number of these folks, um, that we're going to have to release a number of them, uh, possibly to countries who may or may not want them, um, and certainly don't have the capabilities to monitor them going forward, um, and that we're going to have to live with the consequences of that. And, and that's not something that wins you points in Washington for saying, hey, we really botched this. Um, and, yeah, this is probably going to have costs uh, for the United States, uh, both in the short uh, short term and in the long run. Right. So but, but at least, um, you know, you could say, hey, but as far as recruiting tools are, are going uh, for militant groups, we're switching over to drones. And, you know, Guantanamo is pretty passe. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Guantanamo like, is so is, old. Is, is, is even, even that argument, as true as it is, is a very tough one to sell, uh, you know, from a populist perspective of saying, well, you know, hey, this was a recruiting tool in this sort of shadow war that, that most Americans don't really get to, to hear much about or let alone see how it works. Um, so, I mean, for those people that care, yeah, Guantanamo is clearly a recruiting tool because of the fact that people are obviously being mistreated there and have been deprived of their rights. Um, but at the same time, why was it that it took uh, four years for the American public to seem to get up and hands over it? Um, obviously, the hunger strike had something to do with that. But uh, the, the mistreatment that's been going on there and people being deprived of their rights is really nothing new. Uh, and the truth is, is that the American public hasn't really cared that much about it. It's not even like the physical uh, – the physical – place Guantanamo anymore. I mean, like the word Guantanamo has become synonymous with, uh, you know, uh, secret government, uh, uh, you know, place where you're put when you do something that can be related to terrorism or even even not even that. It's become like a, a joke in modern culture, like, oh, we're going to send you to Guantanamo when you do something. So, I mean, the I feel like they've given Guantanamo Bay... Uh, I guess you can say, a, a meaning that will continue on even past whenever Guantanamo Bay itself, the physical place, will be closed. I think that's totally true. It, 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 definitely. I mean, and that, that's, what, that's what I was sort of getting at with the fact that, you know, that there is no happy ending here. Um, you know, when Guantanamo Bay gets closed, you know, some people are going to be released that, you know, by some objective measure, one might say we prefer they weren't released. But that's just what was, what's going to happen. That's how it's going to end. Everybody knows how it's going to end. The question is, uh, when is, you know, the political calculus going to come into play and say, uh, okay, now is a good time to, 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 to absorb those consequences in the short term. Right. And how many more kind of, you know, uh, by the same token, how many more people who are entirely innocent uh, are going to have to continue to pay the consequences of what has been a just a disastrous policy from the outset? Uh, Eli Clifton, exactly. it's been great, great talking with you. Uh, appreciate your time, man.